Hi, this is Steve Barton. Uh, we're at the stage now with our low profile sign plate where I finished uh, doing off camera, I finished milling these. I just got some uh, our uh, little gauge pins set in the holes right now. These holes are about 10,000 smaller than what they will uh, be when I'm finished. When I'm finished, I'm going to uh, shoot for jig grain in them for just a, just a very light thumb fit uh, with a quarter inch dowel pin. And uh, anyways, uh, I just thought uh, I wanted to see how the swivel action would work uh, before uh, I heat treated, make sure I won't have any clearance problems. But uh, I just thought I'd share this with you as well. Uh, I have it set right now with... Uh, just a three-quarter gauge block. The pivot action is pretty good. Uh, I don't have it. There's a little interference I could take out, but I'm not going to uh, because there's no way I'm never gonna, uh, ever going to use it at an angle greater than that anyhow. But right here is uh, just to show what I have, uh, as, as big of an angle as I want. It's four inches from one roll center line to another roll center line. This is three inches and three quarter. I mean, a very steep angle. And you would generally never use a steep angle like this anyhow, uh, because with a sign bar, once you pass 45 degrees, you're going to start losing some of your accuracy because the, the steeper you get, uh, uh, the... Uh, if your blocks are off just a little bit or something's just not right, it's magnified a lot more than is if you're at a lower angle, uh, like so. But anyways, uh, I, I mentioned on our Instagram that uh, I wanted to build three more of these. I wanted to build one for solid rock, one for using at my full-time job, and uh, then... What I wanted to do was give one to one of our subscribers, see if we can come up with a unique uh, a random way with some kind of contest. Uh, but and then uh, I started looking into the legalities of this and I, I have to change my mind. Uh, it's amazing, uh, but well, your lawyers and your government and some of the laws and restrictions they put on everything and all the red tape you have to go through uh, is just not worth the effort. And uh, apparently there's YouTube policies on that uh, and everything else. So we just don't want to risk it. But I was going to be more than happy to make uh, uh, three sets and make them out of a CPM 3V, have them send out and have them professionally heat treated. Uh, but we'll, we're going to have to kind of, I guess, pass on that plan. Uh, I was going to make them so that this bottom base would stick out about an inch further. And what that would do is it would allow you to bridge this gap in the vise by about another inch and it give you more room uh, that you can move uh, your sign plate back and forth uh, and give you more options with your vise as far as positioning your work and it would have been a lot nicer. On today's video, what we'll plan on doing is going through the heat treat process. Uh, this is made out of O1. Uh, you can heat treat all one with just some uh, uh, torch and oil. The oil that I'm using is a canola oil. Uh, in the past, I've used different oils. If you look on the internet, uh, uh, you'll find a lot of people uh, will use peanut oil, vegetable oil, corn oil, uh, you name it. It's, uh, you just need a light oil. Uh, and basically what you're doing is you're taking this at a quench temperature, you're bringing, uh, you're cooling things down a lot faster than if you would just leave it in the air. And that's where you get the hardening properties uh, of the steel. And uh, a lot of people on the internet, uh, they'll say not to use oil, uh, like uh, motor oil or uh, uh, use motor oil because the impurities or the other impurities that are in that, like in used motor oil and stuff, uh, and they talk about the toxic fumes. In the past, I used just uh, 30 weight uh, non-detergent motor oil, and it worked fine. It would harden things, but I think I'd have to uh, uh, think about the fumes that they would come off. It would smoke a lot more. Uh, I did some test pieces on some uh, other old one before we uh, did the video just to make sure that this oil would work, and it seemed to work fine, very little smoke and everything was uh, good there. 
So anyway, there's a lot of debate, uh, a lot of people using a whole lot of different substances to harden, and the idea is to bring the temperature down quickly. Uh, if you use water, uh, that's not a good idea because that's going to bring it down too quickly. Uh, they'll use a brine solution uh, where you get the, the salt and water or a certain mixture, and then uh, that will work too uh, with different uh, results. But we're just going to use canola oil. We're going to heat this up and then we're going to quench it. One of the things that you have to be careful about when you're quenching something like this, we want to heat this up a little bit past cherry red. There's different colors when you're heat treating. And we want to go a little bit past cherry red uh, to get to the right temperature. We're going to shoot for about 1500 degrees, uh, 1470 to 1500, somewhere in there. Uh, but when you quench this, if you take something long and thin like this, and if you try to quench this by going in the oil like that, what's going to happen is this surface down on the bottom, especially if you go slow, uh, it's going to cool off faster than what you get over here. So as it hits the oil here and it starts to cool off, it's going to contract. It's still hot up here and it's wanting to expand. And then your part, there's a good chance if they're long and skinny like these that they'll come out like a banana. Uh, you don't want that because what will happen, even, even if they look kind of straight, you're going to create a lot of stress in there. So what you want to do, you want to come down in the oil as straight as you can, uh, like this. And then you want to get her down in the oil fast. You want to get it covered up. And then you want to just get the oil. You might move your part around a little bit, get the oil circulating around it real good uh, to get it to uh, cool off pretty fast. So we're going to uh, set up and do that. One thing I just wanted to point out, when we uh, draw this back, I could throw this in the oven at about 450 degrees, and it would get me about somewhere 58 and 60 Rockwell. Uh, but I'm going to draw back with a torch. I'm going to polish the surfaces a little bit, and then I'm just going to look at uh, the different colors as you slowly heat this back up that this will go through. Uh, and then I can determine real close what Rockwell uh, it's going to be. Uh, I got this uh, little machinist uh, ready reference. I like this one. I, they got nice charts in there, a lot of good information. Uh, but if you come over, they got a nice section on heat treat. And in this section right here, they show the different colors that, uh, that steel will go through if you heat it real slowly. Uh, there's a faint straw color, real uh, light like a, a broom, a little um, uh, color of, of the broom there. You're going to have a dark straw. Uh, it's going to be more of a darker brown. Uh, you're going to end up with a bronze, purple, dark blue, light blue, still gray. And all those colors represent a temperature, and, and this is in degrees Fahrenheit, but uh, like the faint straw is going to be about 430. The dark straw is 460. Uh, the brown, 500. You get up to that steel gray, and it's like 630 degrees. So, so just by seeing what color that steel is, you can tell what kind of temperature it will be. And, uh, and when the heat treating, uh, when you draw something back, you want to get to a certain temperature, and that will establish what rock well it is at. And so we'll, we're going to probably shoot for the uh, probably uh, one of the straw colors, maybe the darker one over there. And I'm going to get me a piece of wire and get set up, and we'll uh, get back in the video, and uh, we'll show you the heat treat process here. One of the things you want to do when you uh, heat this up, uh, you want it to uh, be even. You don't want different colors of red because you can have a dull red and a bright red. You want a, a nice uniform heat on there. I'm going to use two torches so that I can hopefully control that a little bit better. I do have a fire extinguisher sitting by. Uh, actually, Adam, you want to get me the lid uh, for this uh, a minute? Also, what would be nice is uh, if you do get a fire on the oil, you can if you got a lid for it, you can quick throw that on and, and uh, suffoc or keep it from having air, and that will help too. So we'll get this going.
going to focus on the thicker sections. The thinner sections will heat up a lot faster. You can see some of the color changes taking place already, uh, just in the heat treat. Just now starting to turn red. Not hot enough for the heat treat. on the bottom there a little bit more. The middle seems to be right about the good temperature. Got to get the ends now. Kind of hard to control with these torches getting that uniform color. The part's a little bit thick for these two. Yeah, that part's a little bit heavy. A nice oxidling torch works a lot better uh, for this. These torches will work uh, good for smaller parts. But So basically, you have her in the oil. Uh, you let her move around a little bit. And the oil... Uh, they say to pre preheat the quench oil. Uh, I'm not sure around uh, one two hundred degrees somewhere in there. I'm guessing. But uh, when we uh, did some test pieces on this, it, it did warm it up pretty good. And you want to make sure that you have your oil deep enough in there that you can put the part all the way under. If the part goes under and it's red and you go slow, it will start a flame on top of that oil. Or if you pull it up. Uh, while that part is still red, uh, it will uh, uh, create a fire. So there is a fire hazard there. You just want to be careful about it and take some precautions.
and I'm hoping that I had it good enough. It's hard to keep that temperature uniform uh, with those thin sections in there on the little tab where the rolls, uh, you had to have to be careful there. I hope I got it enough, but this part was the thicker part. The second piece will uh, be a lot uh, thinner, so it won't be as hard to get a uniform heat on it. Parts uh, would be a little bit warm to uh, uh, touch right now with the paper towel. It's not so bad, so we'll just set that right there. But you can see there's not near as much mass on this part, and so it, it will heat treat a little bit nicer. This, for the little torches we have, is, is just about the limit. And again, the key is trying to get that temperature nice and uniform. And, uh, and again, this is just being a prototype. If it doesn't come out perfect, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, just something that we're, I'll be making uh, eventually uh, some other ones, uh, fine-tuning this and then making them out of a C, CPM3V and then sending them out for heat treat.
Yeah, that one was easier to keep a uniform temperature on. One thing you want to be careful about, if you get the part too hot, it starts getting into a yellow color. Uh, you are got it way too hot, and then when you quench this, uh, you, you're ruining the steel. Uh, it will come out so brittle, you can just uh, hit it with a hammer, and it, it'll fall apart. So, so you don't want to get it too hot, but it's got to be hot enough that it will actually heat treat. You want to let these get uh, cooled off all the way to room temperature before you draw them back. Okay, so we got uh, the two different parts, and I'm just going to take a file to it. And if I take and hit the file flat, I can I can get a shine on there, but I want to hit the corner of this file and see if it digs in. And I don't know if you can hear it or not. It's, it's not wanting to dig in. So I know it's hard. How hard? I don't know. But it's definitely harder than what it was. It's not wanting to dig in. Using the corner. I can make it polish the whole edge if I hit it that way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get me some sandpaper. And I'm going to try to polish... Uh, this one up right here and we'll draw it back and then I'll do this one later on off camera but we'll just draw the one back yeah let's see if we can that might be too fine over here and use a scotch bright I just use that scotch bright what I want to do is I want to get this shined up a little bit If it's, if it's dark with the oil, you're not going to be able to see the color, so you want to get it shined up pretty good. Other thing I want to check is just to see if it warped in the heat treat. There, it feels real good. Yeah, I think we come up pretty good. I don't think uh, there's hardly any warp at all, and again, that's from going straight down in the oil. If I would have went this way, it would have been disastrous. I may get a little smoke off some of the oil that's on this wire as well as a little bit on this part as we go. So, <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to use this torch. I think it's a little smaller flame. I'm not going to get the part down into the high blue. I'm going to hold it out because I want to heat this up very slow. Because when it starts going through its colors, it's going to go fast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to stop at that very first straw color because it will continue to go a little bit beyond that. And I'm wanting a darker straw. If you heat that up too fast, it's going to go through all the colors and you're not even going to see it. Yep, 
You want to try to get that to heat up evenly? I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's got a dark straw color to it now, maybe even a bronze. But this is something that, if you get good at it, I haven't done it in a couple decades, but you can, you can actually control them colors quite well. So you want it kind of uniform, and, and it's still changing. It's getting a little bit darker. It's getting to that darker uh, straw color. So you always want to stop just short of where you want to be and it will continue to uh, come up with a draw. So anyways, this is uh, one of the methods that you can use a, a torch uh, to heat treat and draw part back. The one reason you draw part back is you want to bring the lo uh, rock well lower plus you want to take some of the stresses out. Now once you draw back you don't duck it in the oil again, you just let her uh, cool down by the air. And, and I can see that it's getting a little bit darker as it's going and so I'm going to guess we're around 5860 rock well on that. And uh, the other piece we will do the same thing, I'll do that off camera. Uh, but we'll get that like that and then what we'll do at that point uh, we will rough grind these we won't do that this week it's getting kind of late so we'll do that in uh, next week's video but what we'll do is we'll rough grind this we'll, in other words we'll get it squared up and then we're going to set it up on the, the more jig grinder and we're going to grind uh, these holes this hole right here and those holes uh, the two holes on the other part and we're going to get them for just about as a perfect fit as I can for a quarter inch dowel pin. And once we get that, I know that the grinder is going to grind a few tents uh, kind of not straight on the part. So what I'll have to do is I'll end up, uh, when I finish grind, I'll finish grind everything true to the dowel holes themselves. And uh, that way we'll have a finished product that will be real nice. And I have, uh, I thought I was going to have to either buy a collet or make a collet. 
I forgot that they actually make uh, uh, these CBN wheels where they're neck down. I'll have to relieve it a little bit more, but I'll just throw that right up in uh, uh, the mill over there and I'll put a lathe tool in there. This is a soft steel. I can just use a regular insert, cut that back just uh, nice as can be. I'll be able to use that wheel to go all the way through both sides of the wheel. This is a fine grit uh, plated CBN uh, wheel and that's what we'll grind the uh, quarter inch holes out with and uh, we'll go from there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we'll see you next time.